Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, this week I think we're going to change gears a little bit, uh, do something different. Uh, the game of life works and uh, we may come back to it and add uh, some more features if I think of things to, to add to it or expand on it, but um, since it works I thought we'd move on and do something else this week that I think we can probably knock out in about an hour. Um, the job this time is going to be there, there's a basic there's a famous basic program called TenPrint, um, which is famous because it's only one line. It's uh, one line that does quite a bit or does something kind of cool, um, and so it was in a lot of magazines back in the day when you could type in when you typed in programs from magazines because most programs that did anything useful were pages long, and this was kind of neat that it was a single line that anybody could type in. So we're going to convert that to assembly um, today. This is what we're going to do. So first I'll show you the basic program. Um, I had a little, let's see, now I've got to exit out of the monitor. Okay. I had a basic program that I was tinkering around here in memory. Um, has nothing to do with this, but it's just a little program that prints colored boxes on the screens to show off the 16 colors of the uh, of the Commodore. Anyway, we'll clear that out and we'll start a new program. I'll see if I can write it from memory. Um, oops. And if I can't, then we'll look Gotta find where things are on the keyboard because I'm not using the uh, I'm using the Commodore keyboard layout. Um. <coughs> Excuse me, um, which isn't quite the same as the uh, standard layout these days. I think that's it. I think that's correct. So we'll run it here and then I'll explain what it does. Well, you can see what it does. What it does is prints a maze and it's just a randomly constructed, or nowadays they'd call it procedurally, um, procedurally uh, created uh, maze. And this will just run forever um, and, or until you break out of it and it'll just keep making this. So how does it work? Well, if we check the program here, um, what it's doing is printing a character. Well, first I should say, um, by the way, if you're not familiar with BASIC, BASIC is a language that was created, I don't know just when, I guess it would have been in the 70s probably. Um, and it was on a lot of machines like the Commodores of the 80s. Um, it is what, I mean, it is its name, it is BASIC. And it, there were more complicated, more powerful languages already around at the time, like C and Lisp and Forth. But um, BASIC was designed to be very small, very simple. Um, basically a language anybody could sit down and, and learn to do a few basic things in pretty quickly. Um, it was intended, I think, as a teaching language and, and just for amateurs. And so at a time when everybody who went and bought a computer was basically an amateur, you know, interested in being uh, interested in computers as a hobby, it was a good language because you you literally could come home with your Commodore 64 or 128 or whatever you bought and sit down and turn it on and start writing programs. Um, you know, op open up your manual and and it was pretty easy to write little programs that didn't do anything special, but they were cool. Um, and so that's what this is. So we start off with line line ten. Uh, basic programs had line numbers, and so it, your program would run in in number order. And again, that's not a good thing in a programming language as as far as being a powerful language. But it would it made it simple because anybody can understand. Okay, you know, if I number if I number my lines, they're going to run in order. Um, and people typically started with 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, just because that gave you some room in between if you needed to stick it other lines. So it prints 
well, that's pretty obvious what print means. And it prints a character string, which just means a, a, a number of characters. And character string takes a number as its argument. So it's going to print the character that corresponds to this number. Every, char every different character that can be on the screen has a number. And it's going to print the character of this number that's figured out right here when you take 205.5 plus a random number between 0 and 1. So rand1 returns a random number between 0 and 1, which means half the time it's going to be less than 0.5 and half the time it's going to be more than 0.5. So if you add that to 205.5, half the time you're going to get 205 point something and half the time you're going to get 206 point something. And since character string ignores the decimal part, just takes the integer, it's going to print the character for 205 half the time and the character for 206 half the time. And it just so happens that characters 205 and 206 in the Commodore uh, character um, array are diagonal lines, lean, one of them leaning left and one of them leaning right. And so then the, the semicolon tells it tells print not to print a, re, in a return so that it just keeps printing across the screen. Um, the colon means new command and then go to 10. I think it's fairly obvious. just means go back and start over on line 10 again. And so it just runs this line in an infinite loop, printing one character at a time, either character 205 or character 206, and that's and that ends up looking like, or well, being a maze. It's not necessarily a maze that can be solved. Um, it's just a randomly generated maze. So that's what the basic program does. And so we want to convert that to assembly. And again, just to kind of remind you, this is how fast it runs on the Commodore 128 in uh, regular 40 column mode. So I don't know, it's probably printing about one line per second, something like that. All right, so we wanted to convert that to assembly. And it's just that one one simple line but we'll see how much it takes to do it in assembly so I've uh, I haven't started anything on this but I did create a repository for my 6502 stuff so I'll get that put up on uh, GitLab soon so that anybody who's interested in the, in the code for these things can uh, pull the repository from there but we need to start a project file for this and so we'll call it 10 print uh, to, to keep track of our notes in. So, pseudocode. So let's work out some pseudocode for this. What does this need to do? Well, it needs to print a line across the bottom of the screen of 40 characters. So we'll say, well first of all it's going to loop forever. And then within that loop, it needs to print 40 characters across bottom of screen, either you know left diagonal or right for each character. And then it needs to scroll the screen up. And then basically do that again. All right. So the overall concept isn't too complicated, but now we've got to think about what goes into this. Okay. What, what goes into scrolling the screen up? Well, there isn't any you know, magic call. There, there's probably a call you can make in the kernel, but we're doing all this stuff just with raw assembly um, without using any of the kernel's functions. So what does it mean to scroll the screen up? Well, it means each line, starting with line two, gets copied onto the line, you know, gets copied into the location for the line above it. So line two gets copied into line one, line three gets copied into line two, and so on until you get down to line 25, <clears throat> gets copied into line 24, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you replace line 25 with 40 spaces. So scrolling the screen up means copy each line to the line above it 
fill in bottom line with spaces. Now we'll see what we'll see what it takes to do that when we get into the actual code. But this is basically what we're what we're looking at doing. All right. So now let's start an assembly file, and I'm gonna grab some stuff out of our other one here. Like we're gonna start it at 1300. We want to. We need a screen location. And that's probably about enough. That's probably all we need from there. Okay, we're gonna call this um, 10 print. Just put a comma at the top here. Do famous 10 print routine. And we'll call it 10 print. Okay. So that's uh, just our stuff to get started with. Okay, let's put a label here just to say start. That's where we're going to start. I need to get into assembly mode. All right, now I've got coloration of things. All right, so we've got to stop and think about some things. Um, first of all, we want to know what is the location of the bottom line? Where does the bottom line start? We know the screen starts at 0400, but where does the bottom line start? Well, you've got to think for a second here. You've got um, 0400 is 1024 in decimal, and then add to that 24 lines times 40. It's 1984. And if we want to see the hexadecimal value for that, oops, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, there we go. 7C0. 7C0 should be the bottom line. So let's call that B line for bottom line. So that's where our bottom line is, because we you know, we know we're going to need to start printing certain things on the bottom line, and so we'll start that there. We just need to know where it is. We got we give it a label, in other words. Um, okay, so back to our all right. So we need to loop forever. So that's simple enough. We just need when we get down to the bottom, we jump back up to the top so we can just go down way down here somewhere and say jump to start there's our there's our forever loop all right so the next thing we need to print 40 characters across the bottom of the screen now do we want to print do we want to do that first or do we want to scroll the screen up first I'm thinking we probably want to scroll the screen up so let's Let's switch those two things. Okay. I think that's probably the order we want to do things in is go ahead and scroll the screen up um, so that the bottom line is blank by the time we start printing those 40 characters. I think that'll be the best way to do it. Okay. So scrolling the screen up. What does that mean? Well, like I said, it means take line two, copy it to line one, and take line three, copy it to line two, and so on. So we're definitely going to have a loop there that we're going to have to do 24 times because we're going to go from, you know, we've got lines one to 25, and there's we don't have to copy line one to anywhere. It's just going to get wiped, you know, it's just scrolling off to nowhere. Um, so it just gets it just gets overwritten. So we've got to do 24 times from two to one to 25 to 24. Um, so we're going to loop 24 times, <clears throat> and anytime you're looping, you're probably going to start um, one of your index registers. We'll use X for reasons I'll explain in a little bit. Um, and put a comment there. So we want to loop through 24 lines. Um, let's see, I need to remember to make this smaller before I 
start using the monitor and you can't see what it's doing. Okay. And we may have we may come back and and change that if we need to use X for anything, but I don't think we're gonna need to, so we'll see. Um, all right and then for each line then we want to copy if you if you think about you know line one starts at 0400 which means line two is going to be at 0400 plus 40 because it's 40 characters per line so 40 characters on so we're going to want to then 40 times so we're going to have to start with a loop for the line itself 40 40 spaces okay and then we want to load a with the value at let's see it's going to be screen plus 40 comma y and then store A at screen comma Y. So we're going to load A with a value from 40 ahead, which puts us on the next line, and then store that in the current line. So if we're, if we're on line 1, we're going to load A with the value from line 2, and then stick it at the same spot on line 1. Now, right away, I have a problem here because this that needs to be 39. Um, Actually, let's uh, let's go with zero on that. So we work from left to right. It is going to add one more command later on, but I think that's a better way to go. Rather than trying to be too clever with it, um, I think it's more readable if we do it this way. Okay. Now that's going to be okay for the first, you know, for the first line. So then we have to we'll have to increment y, compare it to 40, because if it got if it gets when it hits 40 after being incremented, that means we're done with that line. We've done 0 through 39. Now we're done with that line. And so branch if equal up to, and so we need to put something right here right after we initialize our y loop. So branch of equal to y loop, and we're going to need a, another. I know we're going to need another one here for x loop later on. So, so actually, it's branch if not equal. Sorry. So we compare to 40. If it's not equal to 40 yet, we need to branch up here and do another one with y incremented. So we'll go through. Y will be zero the first time, so it'll load the first character off the second line, write it to the first character on the first line, and then we'll increment y, compare it to 40, it's not 40 yet, we'll branch back up here, we'll get the second character off the second line, copy it to the second carrier character on the first line, etc. Alright. So that's good. Now the question is, how do we move up to line 3 and 2? Because if we keep using screen, screen is going to always stay 0400. Now we could do self-modifying code like we did in the life game. We could modify this value right here and this value right here. That's kind of tricky though. Um, it's doable if you're really trying to be fancy or save a couple of bytes, but um, it's it's not it's probably not the smartest way to do it. It does it leaves you open for a lot of mistakes. So what we want to do I think is let me think here. Um we probably want to use indirect um, indirect addressing 
and by that I mean um, it's called uh, indirect indirect indexed addressing and to do that first of all we're going to have to have um, we'll have an address called C line which will be we'll put that in zero page because it'll have to be in zero page for what we're going to do with it and that'll be current line and then here what we have to do is say load A from C line indirect to Y okay now there's gonna be a problem we're gonna to have to have actually two let's see yeah that'll work we'll have C line and N line for next line and we'll put that at FD so we have to load A from N line and store it in C line indexed by Y now what's going on here this is a little it's a little confusing and I did use it before and I think I explained it quickly then but it is confusing so I'm going to explain it again what this does let, let's say let's look at the first one let's translate that to what it's actually going to be at, after the uh, assembler gets done with it it's going to look like this FDY okay. what that does because of the parentheses around it makes it indirect and so what this does is it goes and gets a it goes and gets the address that's being held in bytes FD and FE and it makes an address out of those putting putting the second one first the, the the lower byte always comes first so you make an address out of what is being held in FE and what is being held in FD you make an address out of that and then you add Y to that and go to that address Okay, so you're not going to, you're not actually putting anything in FD or getting anything from FD. You're using it as a pointer, basically, to somewhere else, and it's indexed by Y. And so if, let's say, in this case, let's say we want FE to be equal to 04 and FD equal to zero zero or actually in this case because we want the one all we want the second line it'll be equal to that then let me switch those okay in fact let me fill in a couple more let's say FB is equal to zero zero and FC is equal to oh four all right then what are what these are going to get turned into is going to be um, load A from and then it says okay in line is FD so we go to FD that's our low bit and then FE is our high bit and so this becomes 0428 comma Y and that's what happens there the parentheses say it's indirect and so instead of using this number you go to this and get a pointer from it get two bytes from it, this one and the next one from a zero page, make an address out of them, and then that becomes an indexed thing. And then the next line, store A, is going to do the same thing. It'll go to FB and FC, get these two values, put the low byte second. You know, the first one is the low byte, so 0400 Y. Okay. That's what that's going to do. So what we need to do then this is ready then but we need to put these values in in line and C line at the beginning after we start so let's go ahead and put them here um, load a with 4 store that into now that's going to be our high byte of C line and end line so we'll just say plus one to say put that in the high byte of those two and then load a with zero store that into current line 
and load a with uh, 28 which is 40 in decimal and store that into end line and let's add a comment to say set up um, pointers to lines okay now we need to get rid of this stuff that I wrote for demonstration purposes all right so after we've looped through a line then what do we need to do we need to adjust to the next line so we need to add 40 to both of those. We need to add 40 to C line and also we need to add 40 to N line. They're going to keep moving with N line staying 40 ahead of C line, but we need to keep adding 40 to both of them. Um, actually, since C line is going to become N line each time, we can just copy that and then add 40 to N line. Just realize that. So, um, so let's do that. Let's make a comment. Uh, copy N line to C line, or let's see, copy N line address to C line, because this isn't where we're actually copying the lines themselves, we're just fixing the addresses for the next line, just shifting the pointers ahead by 40. So to do that, let's load A from N line, store that in the C line, and then load A with N line plus one, store that in the C line plus one. Now we need to add 40 to N line. Okay. Now we have a we have a two byte value in N line, which is actually F D and F E are the locations of these two bytes. So whenever you're adding to a two byte value you have to worry you have to think about the carry because the way this works let's see if I can draw this out um, N line has a high byte and a low byte so the low byte comes first and then there's a high byte okay we want to add 40 to the low byte and then add 0 to the high byte but if the low byte has a carry if the low byte runs over if it's too big to hold in one byte then the carry will be set and so you know this is good we have we want to add zero to the high byte plus the carry flag which is always added when you do an add an add with carry you don't have an add without carry command in the uh, in the 6502 so the way to do that is we say okay we need to load a from in line but first always clear the carry that's the thing you always got to clear the carry because you only want to add you only want to have the carry in there for the second add if the first add overflowed but right here when we add the low byte to 40 we don't want the carry in there we don't want to add 41 we just want to add 40 so we just want to be sure the carry is clear in case it wasn't so we load a from end line add with carry 40 to that <clears throat> and then store that back into end line and then load a with end line plus one add with carry zero and then store that back into end line plus one okay so we've added 40 to the low byte and then added zero plus the carry to the high byte so if there was a carry from the low byte add it gets added to the high byte that's what we needed to do there so now we've bumped up line you know, line one to line two and line two to line three and then the next time we'll bump up to lines three and four and so on until we get through um, everything so now we'll decrement x and say branch if not equal up to x loop 
and otherwise we are done with that loop or let's see yeah I think we should be done scrolling the screen at that point um, which just made me think about something um, yeah that's okay I was gonna say after we've scrolled this after we've scrolled the screen then we're gonna have to fix C line and inline put them back to their original values but that's okay because that's right here inside of start and so that will get done that'll already get done every time we don't need to we don't need to duplicate that work down here or anything like that so all right so that should scroll the screen so let's stop there I'm just going to stick in a return so it doesn't actually um, loop forever. And let's compile. Uh, I'm going to call this temperant. It compiled fine. Um, let's see. Uh, load temperant. Cannot open. Why not? No, I'm still not. It said it was changing directory. Oh, cannot change. <laughs> it said it was changing directory after saying cannot change the directory, so I didn't see that. That's a little awkward. Um, okay, so load 10 print 0. Disassemble it. It should look, you know, something like what we've got in our assembler. Gets down to the return right before our jump back to the top. So let's run it. It kind of seems like it didn't quite work. <laughs> Interesting. Kind of seems like it took one line and copied it multiple times. I wonder what I'm what I'm not think what I'm doing wrong here. Okay. It looped across the screen fine, so that that part the the the. Uh, say this part right here the Y loop part was fine but then when we get here there's an issue um, I'm gonna why am I frozen must have run something into memory where it goofed things up. Hmm, interesting. I copied the first line up. that again. So we want it to just copy each line to the line above it. We copied the first line fine, but then on the second lines it did not. Well, let's think about how this is reset again, but then let's think about how this is laid out. If 
if I want to break somewhere. I guess I want to break at the load A in line right here after it's done us after it's looped through Y loop once then I want to break right here and see what I'm doing with these things so that is going to be at 13 1B okay all right we broke there so now let's look at FB to FE okay there's still the the correct values that we started out with um, 0400 for C line and 0428 and this this is all hexadecimal and it's like it's it's like it's likely that I have a mistake in the in here because of hex and and decimal again because that's easy to do um, all right so let's step through hitting the wrong thing I guess um, I thought oh abbreviation Z get my abbreviations wrong um, <clears throat> exits yeah I don't want to do that okay so we've got our break in there we go to 1300 it stops hmm so it dies after Three loops, I guess. After it gets four A zero and four seven eight, let's uh, let's see what those equal in decimal. 1144 yeah that's not right because we, we want to advance it 40 each time and that's not divisible by 40 so <clears throat> well no it may be because we're starting out at, at 1024 yeah that may be in fact, that's probably where my problem is. Um, I'm starting these. Well, no, I'm starting them out with the right values. Here, let's reset again. Okay, so after one time through the loop, and it hasn't adjusted anything yet, Everything's right. 0400 and 0428. And then another time through the loop. It's gone up to, okay, well that's correct. 0450 and 0428. Another time through the loop. Yeah, that's, that's correct. But then it sticks for some reason. <clears throat> the locations are correct, so <clears throat> the question is, what am I hitting that is that is locking it up? Interesting.
let's do this. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the screen memory. You can see uh, spaces across the top, and then it says Commodore. Um, where does it actually say Commodore, though? I guess it's just because the screen the screen values don't show up the same on screen as they do here um, yeah Commodore Basic 7.0 1223 65 bytes free blah 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 so that should move up and get rid of all those 20s after we run through a loop so we break out after the Y loop. Well, it seems like it did it. It's, um, you know, space and then CO. Next line is not moved though, I don't think. Let's see. Let me blow this up for a second. So all the 20s moved up and off out of the, out of here. So this right here came up to the top. So this right here is right here now. And then this line this batch is right here. This is here. 32, 33 is here. Um, this would be easier to read if it wasn't. Uh, I don't know if I can make it white. No, it won't go wider than that. Um, Yeah, but then this line is the same. Well, that makes sense. Okay, because it's only done two lines so far at this point since I broke out. It's only actually copied two lines. So it's copied 80, 80 characters, which would be 10 of these chunks. Um, would be down to here. Or maybe it's only, I guess it's only copied one line at this point. Is that right? Yeah, because now the now the first line, okay, yeah, it's copied line two to line one. It seems like it did that successfully, so where is the hang up? appears to be doing the right thing with adding 40 to N line and C line that that part is okay
Okay, I think maybe I see the problem. Maybe. Maybe not. <clears throat> see the problem right here compare to 40 that's comparing the accumulator to 40 I want to compare Y to 40 that was apparently just working on accident part of the time and uh, then once it got to where it didn't happen to match 40 it just was going into an infinite loop because it was incrementing Y comparing to A and it just never happened to match so let's see first one, stopped up second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, delete our break, and go, and it broke at the end after, okay, it had moved everything up, all right, uh, boy, that took entirely too long to find that, okay, so, the scrolling uh, scrolling up works. It appears to at least. Now we'll we'll see if it's if it continues to work on every loop, but it at least works the first loop. 
so let's get rid of that. Um, so what do we need to do next? Scroll the screen up, copy each line to the line above it. We did that. Then fill in the bottom line with spaces. Okay, that's pretty easy. We just need to. Our bottom line starts at B line. And so again, we're going to load Y with zero. Um, load well here. Load A with uh, hex twenty. Load Y with space. Let's have a label call it space loop. We loaded Y with zero. That's going to be our index, and then we're going to store A into B line, comma Y. So B line indexed by Y. We'll store the space there, and then increment Y. Compare Y to 40, and branch if not equal. Back up to space loop. Okay, that should give us a, a line of um, that should give us a line of spaces on the bottom. All right, and then we print the forty characters across the bottom of the screen. The part that we actually, you know, this is the everything we've done up until now was basically just handled by basic saying print a character and basic was doing all the work of scrolling you know moving across the screen putting the character in the next location um, scrolling the screen up when it got to the bottom all that stuff you know basic was just handling all that and that's why it's slow you know because it's got to it's got to figure all this stuff out um, and it's got to check a lot of things that we don't necessarily have to check because we are you know we know what we're doing um, or you know we know specifically what we want our code to do basic has to check for all sorts of different possibilities that you may not actually be using okay so let's think a little bit about what we need to do here we're going to be going 40 times across the bottom printing the printing 40 characters so again we're going to have a loop load Y again with zero. Um, we'll call it print loop this time. And we need to get a random character, a random one of two characters. Now we had randomness in the last thing so let's go back to our game of life. We had a setup rand function right here and so we're just going to borrow that. put it down at the bottom set up rand so that we can call this to set up our rand random stuff we'll call it way back at the top here okay so that sets up if if you haven't seen the previous one that where I talked about that basically to get a random number on the Commodore um, 64 or 128 you pull a value from the noise oscillator in the SID chip, in the sound interface device chip. And this just sets it up to have maximum randomness. Um, otherwise, you don't get, I mean, it's not, it's not perfect randomness in the first place, but it's good enough for our purposes here. All right, so we want to get a random value so we need to load A from, and again, we'll, we'll check our, our uh, code over here. Let's see, where did I? Random, D41B. Let's copy that line, stick it in up here so we don't have to keep track of D41B. So we want to load A from random. That's the location. Now in this case, we don't need, we just want a random number zero or one. Okay, all we care about is zero or one. So, you know, there's a few ways we can do that, but the simplest way I would say is we're just going to and this. Um, with um, one, and we'll, we'll say zero one just to make it obvious what we're doing. What this is going to do is it's going to clear all the bits in the random number except the, 
the last bit, the, the, the one bit. So it's going to end up being either 0 or 1 based on that. Um, okay. And then we want to add that. Let's clear the carry. And then add that to the number of the character that we're going to be showing on the screen. Now, in basic, we use 205. And the problem with that is, let's come over here to the uh, manual. Screen, the screen display codes that we would be using in assembly are different from the ASCII codes that BASIC reads. So in BASIC we use the ASCII code and 205 um, actually this doesn't go up to 205 but 205 it says uh, yeah 205 is the same as 96 through some of them are repeated because basically they're just there aren't 255 ASCII codes um, some of them are reverses of others um, so 205 would have been let's see that's 192 from 205 is 13 and so you add 13 to 96 you get 109 and so yeah it's 109 110 <clears throat> that it was using well we can't use the ASCII codes because we're not using basic we're just poking them directly into memory and so we've got to go up here to the screen codes and we find them here at 77 and 78 so we want what we want to do is just add 77 and that's decimal 77 on that chart so I'm not going to bother converting a text decimal we'll let the assembler do that so we add 77 so if we had 0 we're going to have 77 if we got if our randomness was 1 we're going to have 78 okay and then we want to store that into b line comma y increment y, compare y to 40, branch if not equal up to print loop. Okay. And then let's return from that, just because again I don't want it to go into an infinite loop yet. I want to be able to stop and see what it's doing. Alright, let's assemble. load it and run it okay we have a problem obviously um, but it scrolled the screen up it I assume it printed spaces on the bottom we don't know because it didn't uh, you know it, it happened fast enough that we didn't get a chance to see the spaces being printed but then it printed all um, left hand uh, diagonals across the bottom so the left hand diagonal is 77 so for some reason we got all zeros from our randomness so why is that well loading a from random ending it with 01 that should Adding that to 77 seems like that should work. Why is it not working? Let's uh, have no breakpoints yet. We'll set a breakpoint at the clear carry so that we break right there each time through the loop. That's at 1349. Okay, it stopped. Oh, wait a second. I, I should probably reset this so we can tell better what's going on. Okay, broke out at clear carry. And the accumulator is zero. Um,
and so when it adds that to 77 it's going to get 77 so let's continue it goes around accumulator 0 again and again and again and again hmm well let's put a break above that at 1347 before it does the AND. Okay, and then go again. All right. The accumulator is 52, so when it ends that with 1, that should be clear. And it is. Accumulator becomes 0. This time it's 68. And then it becomes 0. 7E, that's also an even number. Basically, even numbers will become zero, and odd numbers will become um, odd numbers will become uh, ones. And so, I'm looking for an odd number, and I'm not getting odd numbers. That's interesting. I wonder if hmm. I wonder if there's a reason for that that uh, that that maybe that register only gives even numbers. I, I thought it could give any number between zero and two hundred fifty-five. <clears throat> that puzzles me a little. In the other program, we were using I think the sixth bit, not the bottom, you know, not the low bit. And this one, I figured the low bit would be the, the obvious one because we just want a zero or one value. Um, but it seems to be determined to only do even numbers. Hmm. Well, let's try this. Let's, um, before we end it, let's rotate it right. That'll move the, the second bit down to the, you know, move bit one down to bit zero. Um, I may have to read up on that a little later to find out if that's a known thing. checkpoints again. Uh, where are they at? Right there at the end. Thirteen forty eight and thirteen four A. Okay, D C that's an even number, so that's gonna become zero. 6, 8 is even. Why? I'm still only getting even numbers. What in the hell? Um... bizarre. I had no idea. Oh, there was a five. Okay. There we got, an, we got an odd number. So it is capable of having odd numbers. There's another odd one. Now all of a sudden I'm getting odd ones. A bunch of odd ones in a row. That's interesting. I thought there'd be the most randomness in the bottom part of the byte, but maybe it's the other way around. So now I'm getting all odd numbers. Hmm. Still all odd. And then it got to the end. So you can see by the pattern there. <clears throat> 
Actually, I'm not sure why it broke out there. But you can see by the pattern that it was getting all even and then it switched to all odds. Weird. Well, let's do this. Um, we can use the top bit by doing this a little differently. If we load A from random and then rotate it left, that's going to rotate the top bit of the random number that we just got off into the carry. So then we don't need to rant, we don't need to end it with anything, and we don't want to clear the carry. We just go ahead and add the carry. Or let's see. Well, no, that won't work because that we'll still have to load a with zero and then add with carry the 77. I think the carry should still be set at that point. I don't think loading A should clear that. So that should be that should work with the the high bit. We'll rotate the high bit off into the carry and then add with carry to 77. Let's try that. Breaks at 13.48 and 13.48A. I guess that's a good enough place for him. Let's put another one at 13.47. Okay. Okay, A is FE, which is which means the high bit is going to be set. So rolling it then should roll that into the carry. And so the carry the carry is set, then load A with zero. Yeah, the carry is still set. Add that to 4D, which is 77 in decimal. Oh, and then it came around again. Okay. This time it's got an even number. It rolls it. Well, it doesn't matter if it's odd or even. This time it's got 14, so the high bit is going to be clear. Rolls it left. It's still, and then the carry is clear then. Loads A with zero, adds that, and, come, and then comes around. Okay. Alright, let's delete the breakpoints and let it run. And it broke out at 801. Why would it be jumping to 801? Oh, probably because that's where I'm going into it from basic. Let's reset everything. Okay, it did one line. It doesn't look, I don't know if it's really totally random yet, but let's see what happens if we can let it go through and do more lines. Let's uh, change that right there. Oops. Okay, so now it'll be able to just roll our, on around forever. Yeah. I think maybe it could use a little more randomness. It doesn't seem quite as random as the basic version was, but it does work. Um, and note how fast that is. You know, it's, it's buzzing on by. If we compare that to the basic version, yeah, I don't, I don't know how long it's taking to print a line, 
but it's almost too fast to really, you know, appreciate what it's doing. Um, I don't suppose my basic one is still in memory. No. Let's write it one more time just to um, remind ourselves what it looked like. Find these characters. So there's the basic version. I'd say it takes about a second to go, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah, it takes about a second to print a line. Um, and then come over to the assembly version. And, you know, it's, it's probably printing several lines. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, it's probably printing 10 lines or more per second. One Mississippi, yeah. Maybe even a whole screen per second. I mean, it's just hard to tell. Let's do one more thing. I'm over an hour here, but I wanted to do one more thing that won't, that won't take long at all. Um, let's add a delay. Let's try to delay one second. I don't. I don't actually know how how long this will delay, but we'll just try one. Um, let's load a with zero. Or I guess. Well, let's see. I don't want to mess with x or y because. Uh, when I jump to this, I'm going to be jumping to this in the middle of all this stuff, and so I don't want to mess with X or Y on it. Um, actually, I could use X because by the time we're only using X to scroll the screen, and once we're done scrolling the screen, let's see, X gets reset when we go back around to start, so it'd be okay to it'd be okay to clobber X down here in the print loop part. That's what we'll do. We'll just right here after after printing the bottom row of stuff, we'll jump to delay one sec. So we'll use X. We'll decrement X. Uh, we've got to have a loop here. Delay loop. Decrement x, branch of not equal to delay loop. And then return. Okay. So all this is going to do is loop pointlessly 256 times until x comes back around to zero. Because the first time it's going to decrement it, it's going to be 255 or FF and in hexadecimal. So it'll branch of not equal and keep decrementing it until it gets down to zero and that'll be the delay. So we're sticking in a, a delay loop of, I don't know, how many hundreds of, you know, or hundreds or thousands of milliseconds, but we're sticking a delay loop in there. We'll see how much that slows down this, this process. Um, yeah. Zero. No, that didn't change it much, did it? Okay. Let's do this. One more one more thing. Instead of using X, let's just set up another location. And we'll call it delay. And we'll put that at FA, I think. I think I can use FA. Let's uh let's find out. Let's check the memory map. Just make sure we've got a safe location. Yeah, FA is also free. You've got FA through FE is always free that you can be sure the monitor and all that stuff isn't going to mess isn't going to mess with. Um, okay, so we'll have delay at FA. So we'll use that instead of using X. So let's load A with zero. Store it into delay. And then we'll decrement delay, and that'll be our that'll be our loop. We'll be working on that that value instead of one of the registers. 
Um, and I think that should be right. I loaded it with zero, stored it there, and then, yeah, that seems right. So now we can call that, instead of calling it just here at the end of each line, you know, at the end of each time that it prints a brand new line, we can call it up here. Let's see. Like, well, let's see. We don't want to mess with A in the space loop. We can call it right here because we're gonna we're gonna load A from random anyway after that. So we can call it right there and know that we're not messing up A for anything else. The accumulator. When I when I say A, I mean the accumulator. I should probably be more specific, but. So now we've added that delay after each um, yeah, after each new character gets printed, or well, before each new character gets printed. But now there's a delay 40 times across the screen instead of just once. OK, so that slowed it down quite a bit. Now you can actually kind of see the maze shape as it's moving across the screen. So that's much better. Um, that's the thing. In basic, a lot of times your programs are too slow. You wish you could speed them up. In assembly, sometimes you have to slow them down um, and stick in little delay loops like that. If you if you need to slow something down enough to be viewed, you know, if you're writing a game and you've got you know ships shooting at each other or something, you may actually have to slow down the the process of some things just to make it playable. So anyway, I think that's it for this. Um, it works. So. Uh, that's 10 print done in assembly and then slowed down a little bit because it's too fast in assembly. So I hope that was interesting. Um, next time we'll either be back to the game of life and adding features to it or uh, moving on to a new project. Um, right now I'm kind of leaning towards a new project. I just don't know exactly what it's going to be yet. So certainly open to suggestions if anyone has any, um, but we'll come up with something. So hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.